Hi everyone, so this video has been long awaited. I'll just have to pop you down here. Yes, so this video has been long awaited for me to actually tell you the process of how I started my business and what was the expensive, what was the uh, expectations, what I had to do, um, the money going in, the money going out, uh, what I've done myself. Wow, it just went real dark. So I think I'm just gonna have to leave it like that because it kind of sets the mood, so I really like it. Got my coffee, it's like 2 p.m. But we need to talk about this because the longer I leave it there, more questions people have for me. So I've been asked a lot of questions on YouTube in the comment section and on my Instagram, how I started, what is the ways that I'm promoting it and things like that and how I'm growing it. So I made a few bullet points to tell you the process and what I had to do and the expenses and everything like that. So I have it all here. I tried to be as organized as I could. So I think this is gonna be a pretty lengthy video, but it's gonna be really useful for anybody that wants to start a business. Bear in mind, I did do a fashion degree, not a business degree. So some of these processes I wasn't expecting, so I had to figure out myself. And, but I do know how to make it and the process, but I just don't know how to set it up. So obviously I had to learn myself. And I think, one of the best ways for you to learn is either read a book or um, do some Skillshare classes. If you don't know how to do the building of the brand or the website or the processes, then there's wonderful classes on Skillshare. There was one that I really liked and he was Staples or something. He was the owner and he was so detailed. He was amazing. I'll definitely link him down below. He was amazing for giving you details, but he is based in New York. so. Just to let you know but again just the process but for setting up the um, logistic of it then it's a completely different way so that will be a different video but for today's video i will just give you a few pointers of what you need to have in mind and what you need to work towards so i actually start doing a collection for this summer but because of the pandemic i had to postpone it and a few people have asked me why don't you do a summer collection so idea kind of left me a month and a half to do the whole collection the launch and everything like that so i was very short on time and considering that i'm still doing a full-time job i've only had the evenings and sunday to work on the whole collection so that was kind of a bit like a bit tricky but i think i managed to pull it off with a few tears and a few late nights but i think it's a, i've done okay so first of all i think the most useful thing is for you to start with the name actually the name is i think is one of the hardest things for you to decide on what you need to do because once you start with a name you're gonna have to start the labels the care cards everything like that so once you decided on the name the logo then you can't really go back because you're gonna waste that money on creating something and then changing the name so you do need to be set on the name that you actually go for and i chose to go for my surname because i first of all i really like it and i always said that i'm gonna start a brand with my name but i wasn't sure if i should name it christina antoniuk or antonio christina or house of antoniuk because obviously i did do tailoring before and i was thinking it's kind of where it all started so it all started in my mum's living room so I wasn't sure on the name but I decided to use my surname because that's a part of me why I wanted to keep the name and kind of have me as the owner and the name giver but at the same time separate it to make it grow to whatever it's gonna have to be in the future so I had a process for all my ideas I have a process why I do things so once I did that I had to do the logo and the logo I think I'm still working on it but I just had it like a simple font that I used and I still need to make like an icon I think it's an icon it's called and I just couldn't find one there's loads of websites where you can design it but I looked on Fiverr good idea if you want somebody else to design your logo but I just thought they were not what I was looking for and I didn't have the money yet to pay for a designer so there's websites that generate your logo but they're very generic and I didn't like that and that was like a disadvantage but otherwise I gonna work on it myself so no money involved with the name with the logo design because I did it all myself so once you decide on the name then you have to kind of set the aesthetic that you want to go for you want to what colors you want to use what fonts what material packaging and kind of think of the brand that you want to portray to the world so you need to start thinking of the brand as a separate thing and what it's 
going to achieve what kind of look you want to go for think of that whole aesthetic that you want to and i actually decided not to go for the pink not to go for these trendy colors for now because in a few years ago it was gray was the most popular now it's a bit of brown now it's pink and now it's purple yellow red whatever so i went for black and white and that's why most of my um design aesthetic are going to be black and white so that's why i wanted clean simple and minimal because I was short on time, I had to think of what is going to be the longest that needs to go in production and what needs to be made that I can't control and I can't do it. So that was um, to go on Etsy and think of the um, name of the brand, so the labels that go in the clothing. And obviously I knew that I can make that myself and I wanted a certain type of font and I knew that I wanted to be woven, I didn't want it to be printed, so I needed to find a manufacturer. Again, I needed to find somebody that was making small quantities because obviously I couldn't order in thousands and thousands and thousands. So that's why I had to find a small um, supplier that could do those for me. And I found one and I think they were based in Turkey and I placed an order for a hundred of them. And I think it cost me uh, £15, I think. But it did take a few weeks to get to me. Then I had to think of the size of the labels and what I wanted them to look like. And I think I ordered from them from UK. So things like that I had to pre-order because I knew that if they running late, like with COVID, then I needed them to be on time for the launch date. Then I had to think of the... Um, tickets you know that you put on the garment and what they would have to look like what kind of information they had to do and all the designs I actually used Canvo so I was playing with them so you, obviously they have different um, sizes you can play with and design so obviously I was playing with them and asking my family what do you think of this so obviously I was asking some of the designs I actually took on Instagram and people were helping and that was so useful because people were telling to me like don't make it too big don't, I don't like it when it has too much writing and things like that so I was taking their feedback and working on my brand so you kind of helped me create my brand because you told me what you want and what you don't want so that was really really helpful because I had a small audience that I could ask and people would give me their feedback and I had such a lovely comments from people saying like oh do I like this do I like this so I did take their because their advice and consideration as well I also had to do the care labels and what information I had to put on and what I wanted them to do to look like and another important thing is think about packaging think about the packaging that you have that really really resonates with you and things like that i will show you something so i was holding on to packaging that i really liked and i drew inspiration from and that was two of the packaging that i really liked so i bought something from chanel and i actually start analyzing what i liked i liked the um, the designs like the border that being black i like the font of the writing i like the inside but i also like the ribbon that it has ribbon here so you hold on to packaging that you really like and then work on it and obviously you can take it to your supplier and say i want something like this but with this finishing and then they give you prices and obviously find suppliers that have um the ability to make small quantities that is a definitely a pro because what well, if you change something and you don't want to be stuck with a product that was spelled wrong or things like that so for printing the care card and the um, labels the sticker labels i actually use vistaprint they are an amazing brand to give you good quality printout papers and uh, again you can design it and change it I'm going to look for a different manufacturer for a bigger quantity that is lower in price but because I was short on time I had to stick with Vista Print. Um, as well for the tissue paper I had to go for Amazon because I think Amazon was selling about 200 to 500 sheets for £15 so that was a good price for me. But for making the product if you're not wholesaling then you need to make it yourself and if you're not able to draft the patterns, do the twirls and do the manufacturing process then you have to outsource and obviously you need some money to put into because you need to buy the fabrics, you need to pay the worker and you need to pay the delivery and the receiving so that's an expense that I couldn't afford for now so I had to take that all myself and I kind of wanted it to do it myself which gave me a lot more stress but I think it's very rewarding because I get to have control over the process and what I wanted, the quality of 
of the items and as well when I did the sewing then for myself because I kept the first few pieces for myself I could see the problems and I could tweak it so that was a great advantage so if I was to take it to a manufacturing they would just do it with mistakes then I would be stuck with things that I wouldn't otherwise wanted to be stuck with so that's a great thing to know uh, other expenses that you need to know if you're making your own things you need to have um, sizes of the items I had to buy the fabrics the toile the finishes like zippers buttons and um, fastenings and things like that that are kind of add up so threads and textures like uh, fusing for these for the first ones I had to buy fusing and I decided that this is not quite what I wanted but I kept obviously the first ones for myself and then I used more sateen I think that was more like a luxurious finish so obviously things like that you can change and design yourself uh, what else did I have to do obviously this process I knew how to do myself the most stressful one I think it was making the garments and having the pictures little thing is manage your time wisely because I ended up running out of time for making the items for the photo shoot and I didn't manage to put the zips in and I had to like use pins and I didn't manage to do one item to take a picture and I was kind of disappointed but it worked out to be okay so the photographer was my great great friend I will definitely link him down below if you're in the UK he does wedding photography but he is an amazing he did my campaign video and he did my photo shoot and we did it all at home another I just paid for his time made him food and a coffee so he was very pleased and I was over the moon that he was able to help me another thing you need to think about is website I couldn't do the website without the pictures so that was another thing that I couldn't work ahead so obviously you need to plan things like that so you need to have very good strict planning and what you can work on on what you can't strength and weaknesses that's what I'm going to say to you and the website I initially wanted to go for Wix but I just found that Wix didn't have that many reviews and people just said just go with Shopify because once you start with Wix then you're going to go back to Shopify so you might as well just go Shopify, learn it and just cut yourself some trouble and that's what I did. Um, there's loads of videos how to do the website. I actually used this girl and she was amazing. She showed you step by steps and the processes. So all I had to do is keep my iPad, do my laptop. So I was watching the video, pausing it, going and scrolling and doing exactly what she was doing. So I was imitating what she was doing, but obviously putting my own information in there. So she was amazing. Highly recommend Skillshare for that because it has great, great information and it's very compact and they have classes and it's absolutely amazing at the end I think she rates some websites and that is really really good and she's very up-to-date as well there's other ones that you can use but I, I really like the girl and I definitely link her down below if you want to use her so I think is the one of the most important thing is to have a presence on social media no matter if it's Twitter Facebook LinkedIn whatever you want you do need to have a presence in order to build up the day and the launch because you do want people to visit the site and buy stuff so I definitely did the page and I was promoting it obviously I was asking people to vote on things that they wanted designs and they did help me so which I was super grateful and that obviously made people want to be interested and go and follow my page so I think that's very important and you're always need to like update and put information on there so as it was coming closer to my launch day I wanted to release a video to just kind of showcase off what items I have on there and I did kind of give them a little sneak peek of the items that they expect and obviously I was posting the pictures that I did from the photo shoot and just for the launch day I gave it two more weeks and then I launched my website so again I just build the momentum and that's when I launched and if you did enjoy this video and you find it some sort of helpful then do subscribe because I hope this channel to take it towards more of a business and how I grow my brand and give you more like tips and advice and what I find that I'm struggling with perhaps you're gonna be able to just skip over that hurdle so that's why I want to take this channel towards more of a business and tell you you how to be more efficient and whatever business you want to start with so that's the idea of this channel so if you want to see more videos like that then do subscribe and let me know what else you want to see and do subscribe and see you next time